Well, so we got we got to talk about this now. Then, like, um, you know, uh, when the Biden campaign was running, he banned his staff from having TikTok. Uh, but when he became president, he stopped the Trump administration era attempted ban on TikTok. So we have TikTok now. Uh, there's as we're recording this, we're a few days away from the midterm elections. I know TikTok has talked about some very special election coverage. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, the idea of TikTok and entropic warfare in the United States. Yeah, so let's take a step back and look at language. Um, so during the Cold War, uh, you were allowed to have a movie where you had a Soviet fighter come and fight an American fighter, a la Rocky, and when the American fighter beat the Soviet fighter, everybody cheered. You knew who your enemy was. You knew that that state was your enemy. We're not, uh, I, was, I was just at West Point doing some uh, kind of student group conference thing. And we had a little round table on China from, uh, and there were students from, from all around the world actually and, uh, participating and they're very smart, very interesting. Some of them didn't want to use the word enemy about China, right? They, in part because they didn't want to provoke China. But this, this is just like a, like a class or thought experiment. It's not like a real thing that gets put into policy papers, right? So um, if you read things like the uh, national security strategy or things like that, you'll, you'll, sometimes you'll see it, sometimes you won't. But there is, I can tell you from other things in, in Washington, that there is a great hesitancy about acknowledging that, 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 that they are an enemy. So it's like we understand, like our government understands that the Communist Party sees itself as being at war with the United States because they've do, written about that in their own do, white does papers. Does our government understand that? Well, but like the CCP has written about it, uh, right? You can't believe everything they say. I mean, That's what we've been trying to tell them. Well, I guess it's like what Alex Josky was talking about, that whole problem where um, there's a there's a willing disbelief of what like the CCP says, like in white papers or in speeches or whatever, because they've managed to convince. They the, have to say those things. Yeah, but behind they, they closed doors, they don't want that. Convince people by like having like this. People get access behind closed doors to Chinese leaders who will say something else. I'm, right? I'm so frustrated by this because the the things the CCP says that are true, we don't believe. But the things they say that are lies, like one country, two systems, we do believe. Or like behind closed doors, if if some Chinese official tells you you're invited to a special meeting with a Chinese official and then he tells you, don't worry, we're going to stop the zero COVID thing. It's like any day now. We're, we're, we want to keep, you know, we economically liberalizing. And, oh, really? You know, oh, maybe I should triple down on my China investments. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wow. So. It's like they're sowing chaos in American society. Yeah, and, uh, and yeah, and and the, the language is really important because depending on the language, that that will dictate your toolkit of responses. Um, and so, uh, just as another kind of example of that, what China is doing with fentanyl is, if you're going to be technically accurate, is chemical warfare. You know, China could stop the flow of fentanyl if it wanted. It's not, and it's killing sixty to seventy thousand Americans a year. More than car accidents, correct? I don't know, but sixty to sixty seven thousand people is that's, that's a lot. Yeah, and and for every one, that's a family that's been destroyed, mm. right? A com and communities that are ripped apart. That's and that's annually. So that's very effective entropic warfare using unrestricted warfare. In this case, chemical warfare. If you start to use those words, then your response may be different. Okay, so so if we call the the, the fentanyl thing, and just to be clear, like what's happening is that you know Chinese companies are manufacturing fentanyl and using triads, which are also uh, controlled at the top level by the CCP, uh, and then pushing those into the borders or they're 
having Chinese companies send precursors to other countries like Mexico where the drugs can be manufactured into their final form and then smuggled across by Mexican cartels. I think those are the two main ways that we're getting fentanyl. Yeah, uh, and, and through Canada. And through Canada. And through oh, right. the Port of Vancouver. Oh, right. We yeah. had Sam Cooper on the show and he talked about that whole, I mean, now it's a, yeah, your country's a mess too. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. So, so all right, so all this uh, fentanyl though, it's, it's starting from China and uh, we're generally calling it a tragedy. If we were to, to, if the US government said, this is Chinese chemical warfare, then what is the necessary policy change that would follow correcting the language? So, it's, so if you say it's not a tragedy, it's an attack, then what are you gonna do to defend yourself from an attack that's killing tens of thousands of, Ameri of Americans every year? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Maybe blame the victims. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. If only, if only they had learned to code or something, then they would be, you know, happy. Um, no, I think it's, it, if, you, if you are willing to use that language, then, you know, you're, there's, there's an enormous amount of deliberate confusion around Chinese policies on things like, you know, buying farmland or uh, being listed on the stock market, things like that. The fentanyl thing, is can be looked at in a discrete way, away from all of that. Just just that attack, just that, warrants retaliation, warrants you know kicking out um, diplomatic representatives, uh, repeatedly calling in the ambassador, putting in uh, trade restrictions, blocking entries into ports. You know if you accept that this is a chemical attack on the U.S. population then you have a whole other set of uh, policies that you can put in, legitimately put in place. And I think that in the large, uh, in the majority of the US population, this would be very quickly understood. You know, people have seen it in their towns. They've been hurt by it, they've been hit by it, and they know where it's coming from, but they haven't been given uh, the, the option to support a response that would be commensurate with the amount of damage that's been done. Well, but then how could we work with China on climate change? Well, isn't the problem, though, that with the fentanyl thing, it is it is like the U.S. government, they have not made that direct connection all the way to like the Chinese government, right? Like you could be like, oh, well, it's Chinese companies or Chinese triads. Yeah, we just need to – we need to work with the Chinese government. Well, that is our response. Xi Jinping promised done. Trump, I think, at some point during the Trump administration, right, that they were going to do more to ban fentanyl coming to the U.S., yeah, 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 they, and and that is, that's how you can counter what you're talking about. If he says he's going to do it, that means he can do it. That means he's not doing it, right? So if you need that justification, you can use his own words to to frame it. Um, but you know, if you you know draw a mustache on a Xi Jinping poster in the countryside, they'll find you pretty quick. If they're if you have a whole lab producing precursors for fentanyl that you're then shipping out of the country, I think they can find you if they want to. Well, we began this kind of talking about TikTok and the election. Yeah. So So yeah. So the reason the, the reason that that it went towards language is because if you start to look at TikTok as an arm of Chinese intelligence, for example, then you can Im bring into play different mechanisms for uh, bringing it under control. And we know because of the 2017 national intelligence law in China that any Chinese citizen or company has to uh, support Chinese intelligence operations. Right, and, and while TikTok is uh, supposedly a totally private company, how does the, the Chinese Communist Party view TikTok? How, how do you think it views TikTok? Well, is it is it just me, or do they? Is the Communist Party think of it like a panda? Um, it, it controls yeah. it no matter where it is. Yeah, I think that's mm -hmm. a that's a good way of putting it. I think it it's an incredibly useful weapon. You know, it's an information warfare weapon. So, you, so, so you would say that TikTok is actually being weaponized by the Chinese Communist Party. I I would agree with the Indian security community who said. 
if you kill our guys, we're going to kill TikTok because TikTok has the same effect on our society and our national security as a kinetic attack. But it seems like TikTok wants to help because, you know, they had actually set up a 2022 midterm election uh, app or, or center so that you could learn more information about the upcoming election. Isn't that TikTok supporting our democracy, Cleo? Yes, I think it's uh, supporting uh, our democracy on the way towards its demise. I mean, you know, it's, it doesn't want to, um, uh, it, it, it doesn't have, the Chinese Communist Party doesn't have the same goals as the American citizen. They're not on the same path at all. Um, so it's, it's back to this Marxism thing, right? If, if Stalin had access to TikTok, you know, how helpful how, would we have that on our phones? This goes back to, you know, who is an enemy. If you, if during the Cold War you graduated from MIT and the Soviet Union offered you $5 million to set up a lab and you went, you'd be considered a traitor. And when you came back, nobody would hire you. Now you graduate from MIT and the, and the Chinese Communist Party offers you $5 million to set up a lab and all of your classmates are jealous, right? We, in, 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 until we understand that, as Gordon Chang has said, you know, the Chinese Communist Party has said we're the enemy and they're acting like we're the enemy and they're trying to get us to fight each other so that it's easier for them to have influence. Uh, so unless we kind of internalize how far it's gone and how much damage they've already done, we can't put in place the sort of corrective measures that we really need to very quickly. Oh, I was going to say with the TikTok, I think it's another issue where, like, it's not necessarily the employees who are setting up this, like, 2022 election misinformation center are actively, like, Chinese agents trying to, you know, I think that's too almost obvious and it's easy for people to refute something like that because um it is hard to see, look at tiktok and see oh well like you you don't like it's hard to prove that the algorithm is doing something or it's hard to prove that you know people are outright seeing like chinese right. propaganda messages the way that we think of chinese propaganda right because it has right? just come out that they have been pushing pro china narratives on tiktok i don't think it was that like widespread or specific. Like if you read that article, it's like it, you can see what they were doing, but it was also like they couldn't prove that this was being done in like a widespread way. It was like they found some information that showed that ByteDance might have been targeting specific people on TikTok, which by the way is also scary in itself, the idea that they are able to see specific people who are using TikTok and then try to like push a certain message toward them. But like, there is a bunch of ways that you could rationalize, like the, why that's like not such a big deal. And this is what I see a lot in like people being like, oh, well, this rationalization that like, oh, we haven't like, you're being like a little yellow peril here or something like you're kind of being uh, too extreme. Right, because think... the, the misinformation center is still, like a lot of those people working there are, Americans who are well-intentioned and they right. want to help. Or and they're like, like the, they, they know that they're not Chinese agents. Or, or like the idea is that like you're supposed to be um, like, I guess what I'm saying is like there's, I, the problem is that a lot of what we talk about with TikTok is like a potential threat and it hasn't been um, proven yet in mm -hmm. a way that people are... Um, able to accept, I think certain, certain people who are worried about China will automatically kind of know what you're talking about with TikTok. But I think there is this whole, like the people who are on the more willfully blind side, there's too many ways for them to um, justify it or say like, you can't say that anything. We haven't found like any of this, like Chinese influence operations are much less you know, clumsier and less sophisticated than Russian influence operations online or so something like that on social media. Right. So it's difficult, I think, to say, oh, well, you know, we all know what TikTok's doing because it is only now slowly coming to light some of the problems that have been happening with like what you mentioned, Chris, or with the idea that ByteDance can still 
actually uh, still access information um, that is supposed to, they're not supposed to be able to access. But then the information they can access isn't like super, um, like classified is not the right word, but it's not super private information. But it's so, people's names and phone numbers and birthdays. and So like then you can be like, oh, well, they're not actually accessing anything that, that you couldn't see on their public profile. I don't know about the phone numbers, but like names and birthdays or whatever, right? So you can, there's, I think, too many ways for people to justify that like, oh, well, we don't need to actually ban TikTok if we just do something less extreme, then that'll take care of the problem. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, it, they're setting it up a good, a good system. What my, my father, who was a lawyer, always taught me, uh, plausible deniability. Well, I think this kind of goes back to what you were saying, Cleo, about like having the right narrative about the Chinese Communist Party. Like when you get into the weeds and compartmentalize everything, like Shelley was saying about TikTok, it's like, oh, well, blah, blah, blah. But when you take it in the totality of what they're doing, clearly the Chinese Communist Party is our enemy. And if we just have that high level understanding, it makes all the other different pieces kind of fall into place. So for you watching, the Chinese Communist Party is your enemy. And, you don't know who's uh, watching. Hmm? <laughs> That's true. Xi Jinping could be. Well, no, the Communist Party is also Xi Jinping's enemy. <laughs> I mean, really, part, like historically speaking, party members don't fare any better than non-party members. Yeah. They anyway. might have some more highs. 